All right, temporary fencing, solar panel, take two. So we're gonna try it again right quick. It's been two days uh, with it charging. We've had beautiful sun, so it's clicking like it's really generating. So it said power on the other day when I did this, but I'm gonna try it again now. Hopefully after two days, it's gotten ginned up. So let's see, let's check it out. Hooking it back to the fence, getting the ground, hooking it back to the ground. Oh, a little short. Move this a little bit. Hooking it back to the ground. Let's see what it's doing. See how it's blinking fast like that? When it blinks fast like that, it says that it is ready. All right, so let's let's try, and I'm not fixing to touch it, but I'm gonna let the cows in it and see if it makes a difference. I'm not letting the two Anguses in it because I learned my lesson last time. And I'm gonna let the bull and the uh, the bull and the little Jersey heifer in. So. All right, I know you didn't see it, but. Again, another eventful day as we try to do rotational grazing with our four great cows and our little bull calf. He, he got out of the barbed wire, literally cut himself up getting between the barbed wire. He don't go to food. Um, word of the wise, when you have a dumb animal, when you have a cow who's kind of crazy, the best thing to do is either put it where you're going to put it or go ahead and kill it off or sell it. Uh, he will stay in this paddock. He will not move anymore. Uh, he will be fed here only here and not got out anymore until we were ready to slaughter him uh, i'm gonna let him get about another 100 200 pounds on him um he's growing good but i, I can't i can't deal with him anymore he won't come to food um, my other four well literally i can i can make a command their command to eat i can say it and son they're all coming except for him and uh, i'm just telling you if you have a cow like that or a bull like that there's no point keeping them with your with your other cows because they're going to end up causing issues later on he just ran all through the woods just as we were trying to get him through permanent fencing. We were not even in temporary fencing. We were in permanent fencing. And he was so agitated that he went through a five-strand barbed wire, cut himself all up. But, I mean, that's that's probably what he gets. But uh, I don't know about you, but that just means uh, he's got to go. So I'm going to give him a little bit longer to try to gain a little bit more weight. He will stay right here. Uh, I do have my jersey with him right now to try to calm him down. Um, of course, we'll bring her over to milk in the morning, but he will stay right here the whole time. Um, I live off this grass. It's, it's, he's got plenty of grass here, but um, he will stay here until we slaughter him. So, uh, word to the wise, if you have a stubborn cow or your stubborn bull, either slaughter or get rid of them. Uh, it's not worth your troubles. Uh, we've been chasing him for about two hours. Uh, well, no, probably about an hour now. Uh, and that, that just kind of ruined my whole afternoon because we had so much more to do. But I was stuck chasing him again. So, um, not sure why he even got out. Not sure why he even wanted to get out. But he was just acting crazy. So, it is what it is. We will maneuver on. Always a fun day on the homestead. All right, we got them in the temporary fencing. They're doing good. It's, it's, it got uh, Allie a while ago. She kind of ran into it on accident. And, uh, sorry about the camera. And she, uh, it, it hit her pretty good. She jumped back pretty good. 
Um, the other two hadn't tested it. It's like when they get close to it, it's like they feel the presence of it, so they kind of step back. So it's good, but what I did do, uh, not that I know if it needed it or not, uh, you know, we were worried about things touching it. So I came through and I weeded it about six inches all the way down on each side. So that way it has no obstruction, no even little piece of grass. I did, of course, took the sticks off the other day, but you know, there was some grass just randomly kind of touching it. So I tightened it. And I, I, I literally weeded the whole uh, paddock underneath the fence. That way there's nothing obstructing the air touching it. So um, as you notice, she's staying in this, this mature grass. But uh, the bull up there and even the jersey, I ran the jersey in here. But uh, she's walking back that way. You said they're eating that immature grass. And see, I, I really should have put them in this little paddock uh, before now. I need them to eat this down. So what I'll do is actually keep them in here. Now, I will not keep them in here at night. Uh, I'm too worried about keeping them in temporary fence and this is where we've been seeing those fox and hogs so we won't actually keep them in here at night but i am going to just move them in every morning and then make them eat this tall stuff first this is just old rye and some behavior look see there's the rye top that's rye grass and there's some red clover some white clover so we're going to make them eat all this before we move them all the way back there so um i'm glad beauty is starting in here uh as you can see sizzle is not here uh, we killed him. No, I'm joking. We didn't kill him. He is with the uh, the dairy cow that we're milking every morning just simply because uh, we're not going to move him. He's not going to be a rotational grazer. He's got about another 100 pounds to put on, and then we're taking him to slaughter. But uh, it's just not worth us trying to fight with him because he broke uh, two pieces of barbed wire while ago just acting crazy. So we're going to actually take him to slaughter very, very soon. So I'm, I might even uh, kind of put some grain to him pretty heavy and try to get him on up. And, and like I said, hopefully by... The next few months he put some pounds on and we can get him to slaughter so uh, it just does better like i said in the last little part uh, you don't want a crazy cow and uh don't get her on beauty is loud but she she minds she comes to food uh, and she stays with the other ones where where sizzle don't so um hope you like this little video again just wanted to show you update on the on the fence you see how tight it is i try to get it as tight as i can um and then basically we will keep this side up right here and then that will be the lane so keep on going down so <laughs> deep the grass is I wouldn't let your rotational grazing plan uh, get this high, but this was not originally the rotational grazing plan for us. We just added these because, like I said, in true permaculture, we used it to hunt deer, so we planted it. So why not use it for cattle? So um, it worked out perfect. So we're going to let them eat it and eat all of this down, and then that gives our, our real paddocks time to, to do well. So again, just to, just to talk about... Uh, temporary fencing um you know one the video we were supposed to talk about temporary fencing didn't work because we had to deal with the uh the great calf escape which escaped again today um but but basically the, the purpose of it allows you to be a little bit more maneuverable with your cows um it does a little it does scare me i'm not saying i'd keep them in here all night i know a lot of y'all do um but you know i just don't have time to go pick them out every time uh they get out i don't want to try to try to chase them in and but um you know i think it's i think it's a good plan i think it's gonna work out good with permanent fencing for six paddocks and then have about another five or six just in um temporary fencing and i've, I've been real pleased with it. it 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 is giving them jolts they hadn't tested it anymore so I'm, I'm, I'm glad of that so so we're gonna make them eat it they're doing really good though All right, you see where where sizzle broke it yeah, Daddy. hey i'm talking about broke it in two broke it off the post here i'm pissing the retie it back try to get it tight so that way we can put it back so uh that's why we went on and just killed her with a shotgun a while ago i'm just joking we didn't do that but she is put up in a, a full tent uh, i mean a full fence though we got them back in for the night so it was a good night after a terrible terrible afternoon but good evening so just to show you i mended this fence now this is not as tight as i'd like it but i did get it tight i didn't have a come along with me so what i did was 
I come back and and see that it's not really I could, I could pull this whole string but see it didn't loosen on any other part of the fence so this one strap did so instead of pulling this whole um, section again from pull post to pull post I ran it through here took a hammer pulled from this piece of barbed wire back took another hammer and actually angled both my uh, my uh, nails in now there, there. You see how I pulled that around? That's how I kept it tight. And I just took a hammer, grabbed right there, took another hammer, and nailed it in. I wish I could have showed you just because. Uh, but it's kind of hard to do by yourself. But you see that? So now I mended the fence back. Uh, was not a, the perfect mend, but instead of us having to rerun this whole section again, or at least from pull post to pull post, you see, I mean, that's a good 50 foot from each pull post to pull post. So. Instead of rerunning that and losing any tension on those lines down there, I went on and just tamped it on both sides. It was, this one was too short to go to here. This one was long because it kind of broke from right here underneath this old nail here. So what I did was I come back, pulled that, used a hammer, pulled both ways, mended it that way. So very easy, uh, just a way that you know you're going to have to deal with this on the on your homestead or farm because you will have a ignorant cow, horse, sheep, or goat at one point in your life so um, you see it didn't hurt this fence anywhere else i want to make sure it's tight for our other cow so you can see this this one's got about three weeks left on it to grow um you can see this one is eight down they're actually in the temporary fencing so rotational grazing plan is doing wonderful that those two paddocks got about three weeks to four weeks left sizzle is over on the other side we'll go show you that paddock right quick and again you'll see our garden you see our other animals right there but I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was kind of scattered, but there was a lot going on this afternoon. We just wanted to get something out for you and realize that that uh, mending fence is not what you want to do. Chasing calves is not what you want to do. However, it's, it's just part of the homestead. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you'll um, come back and watch more. If you, if you hadn't subscribed yet, please do. Uh, we'll be using those logs right there on some more raised beds very, very soon. Putting them in the bottom. So we're going to be building more for fall for the turnip. So I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll have more videos on our bees and on our splits. But uh, please leave us a comment. If there's something you want to watch or something you would like to see, please let us know. We would love to, to talk about them. We'd love to answer any questions. Or if you have wisdom on things, please let us know. Thank you all so very much for watching. And again, happy homesteading, y'all.